five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Black and White Show. Uh, we are talking Black and White Show slash preview. First off, I'll be presenting. It's a Geordie theme and ice. We've got the NE29 household are in the house. Is that right? Is that the right phrase? Hi, lads. How are you doing? Yeah, very Born good. Johnny. Yeah, I was going to say, very, very good. Uh, it's been a lovely day in any 29th. So, well, this afternoon has anyway. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant to be here. Uh, Kyle, how are you? Uh, not too bad, mate. I hope uh, hope everybody enjoys the show that we've got on for you this evening. Yeah, on a week where nothing changes, the takeover is still in question and another channel continues to take the mickey out of us. Something's never changed on this channel, does it? But we are going to be talking about the past mm -hmm. news the past seven days and Johnny's going to be taking over and we're going to be talking about the preview and of course we want your whatsapps in uh, this is the only place where you'll guarantee to have your whatsapp read out you can see it on your screen there 0747 649 7166 we will guarantee to read them out so please file them over you'll see that popping up during the show so please get them firing across I've got a couple of uh messages jake just said hi lad hope you're all right jake's obviously a regular as well and daniel said the takeover isn't happening tired of listen of that such and such shite but we may as well begin actually before we begin there uh because sam's little one got a big shout out on bt sport the other day which was nice have a look at this you're watching the black and white show with newcastle fans tv <laughs> Look at that, the scouts are in the air, two great sets of supporters. Good evening to all the Spurs fans who are tuning in and joining us tonight. And hello to the Toon Army as well. Nice to see you all. We were just saying, Jermaine, you should kind of stand right in the middle yeah. rather than in front of one club or the oh, other. Yeah. And just a shout out, not only to the two mates up here who seem to have like a really cool den with some fake brickwork where they drink their beers before the football, but also <laughs> hello to Lucy. Look at that, I'm guessing she's not yet been to St James's Park, Jermaine. How cute is that? She's got the uh, Newcastle jersey on already, though. She's ready to go, I think. Love it, love it. A few months old and the decision of who she, who she supports is yeah. like... Set for life. Yeah, I mess about there, mate. It's not a decision that you made for yourself. <laughs> Mum and Dad have said so. Broadcasting live across YouTube and across Newcastle Fans TV's social media, this is The Black and White Show. So that was uh, little Lucy, who is eight weeks old, has her own Instagram account and a bigger following than us now. So we've got some catching up to do, so she's doing well. But that was a nice shout out, though, wasn't it, Johnny, for uh, Sam and his little ones? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's the little things like that where, you know, I'm sure Sam would have been absolutely buzzing. I'm sure the whole family would have been as well, you know. Oh, there we go. There is Sam there. Oi, oi. Part of the Greenwood and Law on the show, which we've got another guest on on Wednesday, by the way. But going back on to um, BT, yeah, that's just like one of those little things, obviously, with the fact there's no fans in um, in the stadiums. You know, little things like that wouldn't have happened before lockdown. So it is nice. Yeah, and he's got a bit of stick, Kyle, for his long arms, isn't he? <laughs> he did, I. But um, when that clip came on, I did look into the top left hand corner for other reasons. But, yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, can't, no, we, can't talk, we can't talk about it. We just can't show it. So there was oh, a right. fan who got a little bit carried away and showed Robbie Savage is a such and such. Uh, we were told by BT not to put that out. So um, yeah, but everyone else did. I'm sure you've seen it. That was probably the funniest moment. Lee won't tell you, but I will. What it? What I will say? What it said? He said he's a banker. That's yes. right. Banger, total banger. Robbie Savage, total banger. But um, <laughs> we'll crack on, lads. Kyle, just Kyle, hold your Kyle, hold your tongue while you say that again, will you? Hold your tongue. <laughs> no. Right. So speaking of bankers, this man has piped up this week, Mister Richard Keys. Obviously, you can see. Uh, you just can read that at home what he said early on this week. He thought that the takeover may happen on Friday, and Kyle, it's not the first time that he's piped up, and he was being proven wrong again, because he tweeted awesome. late Thursday night saying, oh, it's not happening now. Why is he doing it, Kyle? Is he just trying to get his name out there? Clicks. Um, I don't know why any Newcastle fan actually believe the, the, the shit that comes out of this bloke's mouth, or whatever he tweets. If he told me it was sunny outside, I wouldn't believe him. If he told us a winning lottery ticket was on the floor, I wouldn't believe him. If I was on the beach and he told us he was, I was standing on sand, I wouldn't believe him. He talks like a shit, man. Why are we believing him? Why are we giving him, uh, him airtime? It's just a total leech. And he wants to 
go on at Newcastle fans about morals. We could go into that and uh, see how moral he actually is. But uh, yeah, don't believe a word he says, and I'm surprised anybody took it for took took it as anything. To be honest, Johnny, why does he keep piping up? Because it makes him relevant. Um, look, he's he's got his own thing going on in Qatar, which is another big reason why he might know a few bits and bobs a bit more information than others. And obviously, he's put a big point out there saying that he, he literally had a conversation with the Chronicle and he's basically told the Chronicle I'm going to tell everybody anyway so that it was going to be Friday obviously I mentioned it to our to it in our little private group and I just said Richard Keyes has said this and I didn't immediately put a gif of a pinch of salt so I'd, the only person that knows at the minute when this decision is going to be announced is Richard Masters himself Richard Keyes can say whatever he wants but like, I, look I Richard Keyes will talk about one or two things, okay? His relationship with Andy Gray and why he left Sky, because that's all he wants to talk about at the minute. So, but uh, Arsenal won the look, by the way, against Man City. Interesting. Are they? No, that really affects um, Newcastle, mine, because we're only playing for 13th and 14th, aren't we? I'm sure you'll touch on that in the second half uh, of the <laughs> uh, show later on, because we've got the preview for everybody who's just joining in. And Speaking of, we're well, kind of on the same subject with BN Sports, is that the Saudis, Kyle, have blocked BN Sports completely from broadcasting. Now, there's a few people on Twitter saying it's a great thing, but there's also a few people saying it's not a good thing for the takeover. Where do you stand with that? I don't actually have have an opinion. It's just one of them, really, isn't it? If The, the way you could look at it, and the more objective kind of way of looking at it, is probably... They're trying to uh, the Premier League and the, the Saudi Arabians could be negotiating more than the takeover. To be honest, it looks to me they've blocked being sports out of the out of the running completely for the Saudis to buy a pre get a Premier League deal of some sort. It looks like that to me. Um, they put the takeover in place to get the run in Newcastle and to get the Premier League rights. I think they're talking about. I think there's more than just a, a Premier League test going on. Personally, I think they're talking um, hefty money as well for for TV rights over there as well. That's why I think it's taken so long. Yeah, because there is rumours that they're going to come in for the bidding. And Johnny, obviously, they've been banned, but obviously the, we've talked about this for the last couple of weeks now, is that the Saudis have also blocked uh, piracy rights for legal streaming for Premier League games. And I think they're just trying to tick the boxes, what the Premier League are asking. Do you still think there's a few more tick, ticks to come? Possibly so. Possibly so. I think um, I think the government are putting pressure on them. I think there's certain members of the government that was not, don't want this bid to happen. I don't want this takeover happen, but at least other certain members of the government. I mean, I mean the top top boys and girls that we saying, can you please just give this the tick and just keep this going? Because obviously that trade deal that we have with the Saudis is huge. Like there's a lot of money in that as well. So that probably will boost it for Newcastle. But going back on being and the Saudis, it's it's being aren't going to like the this decision because the Saudis are worth a lot more than what being sports is. And being sports will be threatened and will be worried that's when their deal runs out. I think it's I think they've got maybe two more years of Premier League rights, roughly. Um I think, yeah, two more seasons, sorry, two more seasons. Yeah. So it'll mean that you could probably start bidding for them within the next year. Because obviously there has to be that transition period. You'll see that with Sky, for example, they've bid for Premier League rights 18 months beforehand and it's done very, very secretly, very privately, but there's a decision done. Um but no, it is more boxes to be ticked, like like you say. I think every Newcastle fan now is just sick and tired. They just want a decision. Like we, I feel like I've been talking about this for fifteen years now. I really do. Like we were talking about it for weeks and weeks in April, and then you get a great beard like mine soon. Oh, oh, yeah. I've already got. I'm getting a great whisker now, so I'm catching you up now. But um, yeah. I know exactly. So uh, it's it's. I think it is just a matter of time. We've not heard anything concrete from any source or any journalist to say that this takeover is not going to happen. Like properly not going to happen. It is still being said. This takeover is just get, waiting for the big tick. You know, even the like the, the big journalists that we've had on the channel, likes of Henry Rent and John Cross, they've not said anything. So I'm 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 still confident, but I just want to just I just want a decision. I think uh, as the, as we've mentioned before, I think not having any news is possibly good news as well because you don't want to play it out in public like it was with with uh, the Binzai group last year. Get your WhatsApp coming in 0747 649 7166. We will guarantee you read them out later. 
Uh, just before we hand over to Johnny for the preview later on, we'll read some of them out, so please do. But even Steve Bruce is getting asked about it as well, and he's getting a little bit irate, isn't he, Kyle? Because we're coming now towards the end of the season. He's got to know what his budget is and who, which players are targeting. He's mentioned this a few weeks now that he needs clarity because it's kind of a, you're driving like you've got your handbrake on. Well, absolutely, mate. It's 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 becoming a massive problem because it's now getting to the point where it's going to start affecting next season for Newcastle. Like us as fans, we're talking about transfer targets, and the the conclusion is immediately we will we'll go for him if there's a takeover. If there's not a takeover, we're not going to sign him. It's just holding everything up, man. It's really starting to take liberties. You've got teams looking towards next season. You've got teams signing players and putting things into motion, getting players signed to long term contracts, and we're just kind of stuck waiting for this answer and i mean richard mustards i've got nothing against masters not mustards but i've got nothing against i've got nothing against the lad but, sounds like something but, like something else that i know he's, hold, he's actually holding his tongue properly now <laughs> I, but um i've got no against the lad but he's take he's taking the piss with us like he said twice he said in april and he said a couple of weeks ago oh the, the we're gonna come to a conclusion soon how 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 long is soon like how long do i have to wait Personally, I think we're going to be looking at after the end of the season now, so that'll take into what fifteen or sixteen weeks, um, for for a conclusion of what is supposed to be a four week test. So, I uh, I think we'll get a decision towards the end of the season, maybe a week or two after. But um, it's just a waiting game, and yeah, we're growing very impatient because the future of our club really depends on this deal. And whoever wants to write the letters or chuck the fifty pence in, who doesn't want the deal to happen? has been able to do that because there's been enough time. But, yeah, we just want an end. And I, I fully agree with Johnny. Just get over with whether it's a yes or no. Let us prepare for next season. Does are you, anyone are you... actually know, though? Does anyone actually know? Because I'm getting to a stage now where I don't think even journalists know when this decision is going to happen. They're all guess. It's all guesswork at the minute. I think it would I not so. surprise me. I think it wouldn't surprise me. I don't, I don't know if you agree, Lee, but it'll just literally get dropped on journalists five minutes. It'll be a statement before... The Premier League have a statement already written up and they'll release it at Journalist 5 until it actually goes out properly. I just think that's yeah. that's what I think. I'd be falling in sick if that happened because that's got to be <laughs> one hell of a party like that. <laughs> we'll all, fancy, we'll... saying that fancy saying that where not many people watch. Very discreetly saying he's going to take it off six. So um, if the powers that be are watching this programme, <laughs> you're kind of um, up shit <laughs> creek without a paddle. But... Um, We'll celebrate the take off and you losing your job as well. So <laughs> we'll crack Sorry, right. my, my auntie's a doctor. She'll give us a sick note, so it's fine. Sky's the <laughs> limit, isn't it? Remember, yes, yes, it is. Remember, oh seven four seven six four nine seven one six six. Reading your WhatsApp out very shortly. But Johnny, it was a good point that Kyle made there because at the moment we might be in a situation where we're only going to be loaning players in, or possibly even like Gillespie when he came in a freebie because. I haven't got a clue what our budget is and are we, do we have to stay currently to what we have, which is probably about, I'm guessing, 50, 60 million. And that's lucky if we get that. So are you worried that we can't expand the team in terms of quality? I am to a uh, to respect. I think look, there's always going to be good players around. It's just trying to find them. And I think at the end of the day, when you, what you've noticed, you know, Rafa did very well getting players on smaller prices and actually turning them into better players. Whereas now, if you want the best players, you're going to have to you're going to have to go for players that are a certain price and that are, normally cost a lot of money. But apart from Joe Linton, players are around 40, 50 million pounds, or even slightly less, thirty odd million pounds. You have they're considered half decent players now, and you almost have to try and get those half decent players just to improve your team. Like you look at the teams that are going to get promoted next season. That's a as a Newcastle fan at the minute, you look at the three teams going up or potentially the three teams going up. Can they hurt Newcastle? As in, can they bring Newcastle down and potentially relegate them? You look at Leeds, got money behind them, potentially could do something. Brentford look a really good outfit. And I know they got beat today, but they looked a really good outfit. And you've got likes of Fulham, who's still got a strong squad. West Brom, potentially, who could it's in their hands to get promoted. They'll be the ones I'll be thinking, if they really, really go for it, and it clicks for them like, like it did for Wolves, then it's really going to be tough for Newcastle because if they don't get taken over, and Newcastle say spend another th a lot of money on a bad player. Newcastle, I'm not going to be as lucky this time round. We've been very fortunate this season. Yeah, and obviously you've, we've talked quite a bit in our chat about away days and teams coming up because we want northern teams coming up. <laughs> we London. got every game, Lee, don't we? So 
Well, the London clubs can stay where they are. We didn't want them coming up. No, no, they can clear off. Um, we're going to touch upon the futures of a, of a few players as well since we're here. Um, and again, he's been talked about again, Kyle, is Danny Rose. So uh, this is, first of all, what Steve Bruce has said. We've got all the conversations to have at the end of the season. He's a Spurs player, but he's done very well for us. And there will be conversations once we analyse something. So that sounds to me that Bruce is keen on it, Kyle. It does. Um, it doesn't surprise us. He's very experienced. Ex in England international, uh, two seasons ago, was playing in the Champions League final. He he is a good left back. He's shown glimpses of that in, in Newcastle shirt. But it depends who you just prefer. Would you prefer Jetro Willems or would you prefer Danny Rose? Personally, I think to put uh, Paul Dummer to centre back. So I think it's worth signing the two of them anyway. But who would be first choice? Personally, I prefer Willems. I, I just think he's better going forward and he's a bit quicker than Rose because Rose is losing a little bit of pace that he once had. But uh, if if we can get the right price for him, whether a takeover happens or not, I think for depth and a bit of experience around the dressing room, things like that, and he wants to be up north, he wants to play for Newcastle, it makes total sense to me. So, um, yeah, I'll bring Danny Rose in. Fish and chips uh, to our, for a couple of years, I hope. And not go to Leeds because if he doesn't go and if he doesn't come to Newcastle, he'll definitely go to Leeds. Yeah, I could say that as well. Obviously, he's started his youth career there, but Marino's also talked about him, Johnny, as well. And Marino's turned around and said that effectively he's not spoke to him since he's joined Newcastle, and it's more important about his feelings and his happiness. That sounds to me that the door's closed on his Spurs career. Well, he doesn't want to go back to Spurs. And Spurs don't want him. It's just whether or not Danny Rose wants to come to Newcastle. I think there'll be a conversation at the end of the season with Steve Bruce. I would imagine, unless something really strange happens, I can still see Steve Bruce be, being the manager next season for at least the first eight to ten games. And he might say, look, what do you think? And he might say, yeah, I fancy. I fancy staying at Newcastle. I fancy staying up north. Leeds might put an offer in and he, he might go to Leeds, but... Obviously, he's been at Newcastle since January, and I feel like he's only improved. I feel like since he's come in, I thought the first few games, like who can remember that fang, uh, that fang, uh, scoring the players with me, uh, Fordy and Owen at Palace. You know, we were, <laughs> we were having a massive heated debate about Danny Rose. Fordy uh, was just on one all day, though, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, but the thing is, he's passionate, and that's what we like. You know, he he, he doesn't. He, I say he doesn't care. Of course, he cares, but he doesn't care about hurting people's feelings in terms of scoring the players. And and Danny Rose was one player that didn't play very well, but since then. I think he has steadily improved. And I think lockdown probably came at a good time for him because he could have a bit of a rest, you know, get back to full fitness. Obviously, there was pictures when he first came back. I think looked a bit overweight, but I think, you know, that was put to rest more or less straight away with his performances against Sheffield United, Villa. Um, I even thought he was probably the best player against Man City when we didn't play very well at all, but he looked he looked, he looked looked okay. So um, if he keeps on doing that and we get the Danny Rose of what he was like in the Champions League for Tottenham, or more or less, then I'll be happily happily taken. I think a lot of Newcastle fans would. I think a lot of thing, a lot of uh, people will expect that is the is the price. You know, I think someone said it might be about fourteen million pounds to buy Danny Rose. It'll be nowhere near that with one year left in the contract. Spurs are in a weak position. I know Daniel Levy's very smart and he doesn't get taken for a mug, but I think Newcastle could put say five seven million pounds on the table. And I think Spurs would be like, well, can we realistically get any more from? Maybe ten at the very most, but I don't think Newcastle would go at ten million from. I think 10 million, I would still probably still sign him up for that if we don't have Jeffrey Williams. I'm yeah. with Kyle, but I think we'll probably have to stop comparing the two. A decision needs to be made on which one we'll go for. And at the minute, it looks like it's favouring Danny Rose, unfortunately, but I would love to say Jeffrey ahead. But one man who's been linked quite a bit this week, Kyle, is Valentino Lazaro. And I quite like this idea that this one that came up, and the reason why I've highlighted it is because he's not really getting a chance this season, but we've banged on about this channel for the last few weeks. Would you like to see him back on loan again next season, a bit like Kennedy, but for the full season? Speaking of Kennedy, he's actually a free agent now. I just think we're, uh, we're nearly paid, what, 30 million for him a couple of seasons ago? <laughs> but um, on to Lazaro, I would actually like to see this happen. I really rate this kid. Um, I just think i seen a, I seen a quote like a, a couple of months ago regarding um, Stephen Island when he was on loan up here. And he basically says, Alan Pardew turned around to him and uh, said uh, he, he wasn't going to be able to play anything over 30 minutes a game because uh, the clubs would have to pay out. I think Newcastle have a similar deal in place for Lazaro. 
Um, because he's not he's not starting games, even when we haven't looked, even when we've had to put Yedl in it right back and things like that. I think uh, Lazaro isn't getting a look in. Why? He, he's 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 definitely good enough. I just, I, I think something's um something's definitely up in that regard. Regarding that, I mean, you're shaking your head, Johnny. But when's yeah, he start? Please tell us why. Please tell us why, Johnny. I, I don't think I, I don't think Inter Milan would be that. I don't think Newcastle would be that stupid again. If I'm honest, I think that like I say, Steve and I was a bit different because he was on big money at Villa. I don't think Lazaro is on the the wages that Stephen Iron was on at Villa. I think he, I would have thought Lazaro is probably on fifty grand at winter, maybe maybe just a little bit less, fifty thousand euros a week or something like that. I think um, I would look at the Kennedy situation and do exactly the same thing that we did with Kennedy. I would loan him again, and the reason is, is he worth twenty twenty five million pounds on what we've seen so far? He hasn't shown it. He's, yet. he's, he's had, exactly. No, I agree with you on that, Kyle. I've, I've, I wanted him to start. Um, last few games and he hasn't really been getting a run in the team he's guaranteed to start and we'll, against Brighton which we'll discuss later but um, no, I'd, I'd go for another loan especially with all the uncertainty that's going on with Covid and you know how much money Newcastle can actually spend in a, in a, in a potential window um, I think it'd be sensible if you get him on loan I think he would probably accept it as well because he'd be going right give me a full season in the Prem and I'll try and take as many chances as possible to then sign you up permanently because Newcastle will still probably go for those four or five year deals if he does well and the price will go down because obviously it's another year less that he has got left on his contract so I think financially it would make more sense to get him on loan again um, but I wouldn't be massively against getting him permanently but I just think maybe it would be the most sensible thing is getting him on loan again yeah, I could see that happen again. Maybe paying five million over a season or something yeah, exactly. along those lines, and you see if you're all right about the COVID because it's not just going to be Newcastle. There'll be other clubs as well, just a bit wary of what their financial states are. What's up, us on oh seven four seven six four nine seven one six six? We'll read them out in about ten to fifteen minutes. So please fire over your messages, and we will answer them. But we're going to move on to um, another player in the moment. But just touch upon Lazaro. It was only made, made official the last 24 hours. The new laws is that the five substitutes will happen again next season as well. So that might be more game time for a lot of other players as well. But please get rid of the drinks break because that's just pathetic. Um, one winger who's, you know, he's a Newcastle lad and I'll come to Kyle on this one. Is that Gary Monk wants to bring him back again next season? Quite similar to what Swansea want to do with Freddie Woodman. Um, Murphy, what, has he got two years left on his deal? Yeah. What do you do? Did you, did you send him back out loan with a loan fee? Personally, I I'll, I'll be looking to get rid of him. Um, if I you think can't get rid of him, then you'd have to loan him out again and yeah. then just run down his contract, similar to what they're doing with Saive and Lazar and people like that. Because um, I love Rafa to bits, but the one thing he probably did wrong was pay twelve million quid for this lad. Um, I just. He hasn't. He hasn't shown it, has he? He's, he showed little glimpses here and there. He went. He won Player of the Month for Newcastle when we went on a run of seven games without a win in December what 2018, 2017. But um, other than that, really, he just he, he's just been he's been bang average to be honest. And it's um, it's it's a sad situation because he's a local lad. He obviously he's, he wants to play for Newcastle. He's a he's a he's a big fan of the tune and whatnot, but. Yeah, he's, he's, he, it's just a case that he's, he's not good enough to play for the team. And obviously when Kennedy came in, that affected things for him. And then oh, he was struggling to get in ahead of Atsu. And for me, if you're struggling to get ahead of uh, Christian Atsu in a squad, the writing's on the wall for you. Because like, Atsu, as, as good as a lad he is, I, I, just don't, I, I don't think he's good enough either. Yeah, you touched upon a few of the wingers. Because it's a big, it's a big summer, Johnny, for the, these wingers. You talk about Lazaro, Atsu... Aaron, who's a better player than Atsu, in my opinion, as you know, Johnny, and also <laughs> Jacob Murphy as well. It's a big summer for these wingers because we're going to have to get rid of probably three out of those four. Who are the, so who are the four? We've got Atsu, Aaron's, Murphy, Atsu, and Aaron's, Atsu. Murphy, and Lazaro. Star-studded lineup, people. <laughs> Lazaro's the only, well, Lazaro's the only one I'd keep. Yeah, in same. My opinion. Aaron's isn't good enough. Atsu's not good enough, and Murphy's ha had the, how many chances? I do feel sorry a little bit for Murphy because I think in that sort of team, especially when Rafa was in charge when it was defensive, I think he was asked to be more disciplined. Where well, I think with a, with Murphy, you need to let him go. You need to let him make make maybe make mistakes defensively, just so you can probably get the best out of him going forward. But at, at the minute for me, he's Championship standard at best, and he's done well at Wednesday. The problem is Sheffield Wednesday can't afford to buy a player. They've got financial fair play written. Like I know it's it's different for championship clubs, but 
they've got that thing hanging over them. That's probably going to take them into next season. They're probably, it's likely that they'll have a point deduction next season. So Wednesday, I'm not going to be in a strong position. However, well, we'll help them out. We'll give them a couple of chances. Don't need back. They can have Atsu. They can have Murphy. They can have Saivi. They can have Lazar think, back. Exactly. <laughs> I think I think Newcastle. I think Newcastle are probably just best off either a worst case scenario, like Kyle says, loan them to a Championship club or just sell them. But if I don't think Newcastle will want to do that, I think they could probably say, look, if we loan them out again to another Championship club. And I'll, I'll just put out who's who's not going to get promoted. Um, Derby, for example, Derby, I'm going to get promoted. If he went to Derby and did exactly the same thing as he did at Sheffield Wednesday, Derby might go. Well, he's only got a year left on the contract. Newcastle think, well, we can almost make our money back on him. They can maybe go maybe eight or ten million because he is he is a good Championship player. He just needs because he's allowed to express himself. He says he's not. You're not allowed to do that to an extent. In the in the teams in the bottom of the Premier League, you can't because you're going to drop points and especially. The league's just getting stronger and stronger. When the teams get promoted, you look at look at Fulham like last year. And you look at that team and go, "They're not going to get relegated," but they did. But and that was still a really strong team. And you look at the teams that are getting relegated potentially this year. Newcastle will probably have a worse team than some of them. Like Watford could potentially get relegated, and I think they've got a stronger squad than us. Let's so, just hope, let's just hope Villa go down. Moving moving on happened. to. Moving on to the next one, we'll just quickly touch upon this dead briefly. Luke Charman has found himself a club. He's joined Darlet and linking up with his pal, Jamie Holmes. And, of course, Adam Campbell is down there. We wish Luke all the very best uh, for the future. And hopefully we'll see Darlton come up because that Conference North is full of Northern teams. So um, we're, we'll keep our eyes on for Luke Charman. But, of course, the big one, and it's been talked about again in Bruce's press conference, is Matty Longstaff again. Um, cl- the clock is proper ticking down now. What are we? The 18th of July. Happy birthday, Connor, if you're watching. That's my brother. Um, we've got literally two weeks left in July and the kids away. So where do you stand, Johnny, on this? I've been banging the drum for the last few weeks um, with him. Uh, if Shelby and Hayden are the two best centre midfielders at the club at the minute and he's not getting past them two, but he's get, he's better than Bentelev, in my personal opinion. Or if, if he's not better... There's nothing in it between them, and you'd think that you'd give a 19-year-old Jolie lad more of a chance than a player that we've got alone with German side who I don't think would buy anyway. If even if we didn't get taken up, I wouldn't be too bothered about it. if he didn't if he didn't sign. He, I don't want to spoil it, but he's in my starting eleven for the game on Monday. He starts oh, the show. Spoiled me. I know I've spoiled it, but um, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, th- I do. I, the one thing I do agree with what Bruce said. I do think it's a good offer. But my problem is, is when you hear the likes of Yoshinori Muto's on 40 grand a week at Newcastle and Matty Longstaff getting offered maybe just over 20,000 with bonuses, he's probably thinking, hold on a second, you're not even playing him. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying Matty Longstaff's asking for 40,000 pound a week, but if he's asking for, say, 25, when you're going to lose Colbach, you're going to lose maybe a couple of other players on the wage bill. I don't think that Newcastle at the minute, under the current regime, want to pay Matty Longstaff more than what they've given. They don't want to pay more than £20,000 a week for a player that's played maybe seven or eight Premier League games this season and, and a good run of cup games. They want him to sign on what they, what they are. And Matty's thinking, I'm just going to stay patient. I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to let this takeover talk play out. And if it gets to a stage where Richard, Richard Masters goes, this takeover is not going to happen, then he might just go, Do you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to sign. And I think I think Sam put it on our on our Twitter. Or it might have been you, I don't know who was on it this morning, but Sam there's going to be a, yeah, it's, it, there's going to be a decision this week. So if there is going to be a decision this week, that would suggest that he isn't going to sign because he would have signed by now, in my personal opinion. Um, but if, if if a decision by the Premier League gets done, say by this time next week, going into the Liverpool game, it would not surprise me if Matty Longstaff says I'm going to speak to the new owners before. I, make a decision and that will just rumble on and rumble on and rumble on but who knows Kyle can you get a better club than Newcastle in terms of where we're at as a Premier League side as a Premier League side absolutely I mean see I don't think you can get better than Newcastle I think Watford had a similar kind of level with us yeah but you look at the, the teams around with me and there's a bit of a difference they're looking to do things we're just kind of happy to finish 17th 13th to 17th every season if we do something in the cups we'll do a couple of backflips i mean the the mentality of the football club summed up in a quote by steve bruce last week oh we should be happy we're only a couple of points behind southampton i'm sorry like but they got hammered nine nil at home off let or off, a, off an okay leicester side you know and we uh, i'm so, i'm sorry i'm sorry like but 
Yeah. Like we shouldn't be striving to push above Southampton when Southampton, I'm not being funny, we'll beat them home and away. We'll play them off the park at St. Mary's and they're no better they're no better than us. So shit. Do you know what I mean? So like I'm sorry, but to be striving to push above a team like that and being happy with it, nah. It sums up the mentality. If you're Matty Longstaff and you're an upcoming player that wants to do well in his career, go to go to somewhere that wants to to push forward and get and have an idea what they want to do. Because at the minute, if this takeover doesn't happen, we're not good. We're, what we're going to do? We'll, we'll there'll be protests next season. Hopefully, still uh, Steve Bruce will guess, try and keep up again. We'll lose our best players in Dubravka, ASM, Miggy being linked to Atletico Madrid. We're, we're not good. Like, if this takeover doesn't happen, I don't think Richard Masters in the Premier League realise the, the situation. Because if Newcastle don't, if this doesn't happen, you can have an owner who wanted 300 million, isn't going to get it. He's not going to be interested in the club. He wants rid of it, and we're just going. He's going to he's going to milk the club for what it's worth until he finds an owner. You're probably looking at 40, 50 million for ASM. You're looking at 25 to 40 for for Miguel Almiron. You're looking at around the same for Dubravka. He'll just milk the club dry and then sell it on the on the verge to its third relegation in in what 13 year under him. So if if you're Matty. If this takeover doesn't happen, I, I, I'd be away. Me, I'm sorry, local lad or not, because yeah, he's not he's not going to get what he wants off this off this uh, regime. Wait until the next one and see what the see what the new owners say. I'm sure they'd give him a better offer to stay stick around. But yeah, if this takeover doesn't happen, like where where not that? I think you could say that about several of players and the fans as well. Uh, a couple of stats before we look at the WhatsApp. So now is the time to start firing over your WhatsApp. Um, Johnny, are you surprised by this? Jamal Sells has only been beaten five times on a one-on-one all season. When I looked at that, I thought, that's quite an impressive stat. Oh, it's, a, it's a very good stat, but that's that's one of Lascelles' biggest strengths. My problem, I think sometimes positionally is sometimes at fault. I feel like, you know, you look at the defensive partners that he's had this season, he must have had about three or four defensive partners this season. But it does seem that him and Fernandez probably have the best relationship. But, and they're both quite similar, in my opinion. I just think Fernandez is probably a little bit better on the ball uh, than Lascelles. But I, I would, there's, only, there's not many strikers in the Premier League. You go, do you think you could beat Lascelles? You know, one on one. Only the probably the top top strikers could probably do that against Lascelles, which is you know a big mark, for, a big big tick for him, really, because I think it's him and somebody else in our centre central defence. You know, it, it doesn't matter who. You look at other options. Like I've been banging the joke about Kieran Clark. I think he's been excellent for Newcastle. He's very rarely let us down since he's been at the club. Fernandez has had a great season. Lejeune, when he's fit and he can stay fit, doesn't really hasn't really had many bad games for Newcastle. The only time I can remember Lejeune having bad games at Newcastle was when he wasn't really fit and got thrown in against Everton and Leicester. And I think it was the cup game against Rochdale where he just he, he wasn't fit. He needed just one. He needed like one game a week just to kind of get back to what he was capable of but um the sells his quality where he wants to be and like I'm amazed he hasn't had a chance for England. Like you look at some of the players that have been given opportunities for England and you could have thrown Jamal Sells against San Marino and I think England would be all right. Yeah I'm just um hiding people's numbers so we've got a few WhatsApp coming in. Before we do that, um Kyle I'll let you have this one. Since the restart, only three players have featured in all the games and funny enough, Lazaro is actually on that list, believe it or not. Only Fernandez, Lazaro, and Joe Linton. But do you think um, Fernandez is getting overworked? He hasn't had a choice, mate. Like I've I've seen it after games where he looks and that bad, and he's like making a few. He's making more and more errors per game in the games he's playing. But he hasn't got a choice. I mean, we've just had. To, I mean, I know we'll speak about it in the preview. But Callum Watts has um, has been approved by the Premier League to play on uh, Monday. Funny enough, that's the decision the Premier League hurry up and make. But um, <laughs> like, it, it, it's it's just a shame that he has to keep playing because he, he he has been below par by his own standards. But uh, he, it's just one of them where he has to play. It's a shame, really. But it's interesting, uh, Johnny, that Lazaro's played every game but only started once. Uh, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Like I, I, he's better than Joe Linton, and Joe Linton seems to be getting more appearances on either the left or right when he comes on, and. Uh, I don't know. Either Bruce doesn't fancy him as much as what we think, or he's, he feels he's better as an impact player and he can't be trusted for, say, 60, 70 Or the terms of the loan deal, which I said before. Oh, Kyle, yeah. I'm not, the Kyle, race, you don't, you, Kyle, you can't just say for 30 minutes of a... What, you can't play them more than 30 minutes? 
Do you remember when Arsenal did it with uh, Oxley Chamberlain that they, they were going to pay Southampton every time he played over twenty minutes for a couple of years? They're doing that was with, with Lazaro. Right, is it, man? I don't care if it's twenty quid or twenty grand. It's Mike Ashley in charge of the club. He'll penny pinch all he can. Him, like uh, Lazaro, is a better player than Joe Linton. He's a better player I than agree. the players in them positions. So if you were Steve Bruce and you had full um, control over something like that, you play Lazaro every week because he's a much better footballer. Mm. And whether you want to play Joe Linton as a centre forward, which I wouldn't, I think Gale's a better forward. And as a winger, I'd prefer other players. Jolton wouldn't get on the field for me uh, from the start or come on as a, as a sub unless that's you need seven. as a, um I mean you're not going to get the 40 million back for him though Johnny are you that's that's the problem that's, that's probably, not half. probably not take, even take, half a, that. take take a hit you're gonna have to because he's, he's not good enough yeah I would agree let's have a look at your WhatsApp we've got four that have came in I'll answer the first one so uh don't you this is from unknown don't you think we were one of the big six clubs if it would have been sorted a long time ago well, it's a matter of fact that we were bigger than Manchester City and Spurs before Mike Ashley come in. We used to play a regular European football, so that uh, answers your own question. I'll let Johnny have this one. First time messaging in. Thank you very much, Unknown. Uh, is it possible, because there were three parties in the court consortium to buy Newcastle, that there should be three Premier League tests? It could be three times four weeks, so about 12 weeks. So what I think what he's trying to say, Johnny, there, is it just taking longer because we've got several people involved? Not necessarily, because you still have to, it's like it's like anything. You, you you've got to do checks on every single person, and they're part of the same package. I get I get the question. I just think it, it all those checks would be done as a together, not as in three potential groups that are buying the club. It's it's one combined package, if that makes sense. Um, but I can understand that. But like, I, you, if you said to me there would be a, a delay on this takeover when it's when you people are saying it could take a maximum of four weeks, I'm thinking six weeks. You know, I'm not thinking 12, 13, 14 weeks. The Premier League, for some reason, don't want to upset somebody and they're going to upset somebody. That's just part of what they have to do. Either upset Newcastle, Mike Ashley and the and the fans, essentially, because they want this takeover to happen. Or they upset the British government. Um, who else? The B in sports, Richard Keyes, the list goes on. Hattie's Jennings. Exactly. You're going to upset somebody. Just do it. It's like ripping a plaster off. It's going to hurt, but it only hurts for a few seconds. I'm going to give this one to Kyle because I know what he's going to say. If the takeover doesn't go through, I would maybe keep at two as we'll almost certainly get relegated next season and be useful in the championship, Kyle. I mean, be, be the, I mean, how did he do in the championship or more last in it? I mean, you know, right, um, do you reckon? I thought he was, I thought he was poor in a lot of games. I mean, he has, uh, he had a couple of memorable moments with a, a goal against Preston and a lovely free kick against Cardiff, but. Just kind of in and out, wasn't he? No end product. But um, <laughs> would I keep um, Christy Ratsu? No, I'd uh, I'd rather I'd rather keep a one of um, Aaron's or, or even Jacob Murphy over over Atsu. I just I, I just don't think Atsu's Atsu someone to rely on at any point. To be honest, as a footballer, I, I just do not do not rate his ability at all. Um, I think he's proven that over a, over a long period of time as well, where he hasn't been rated by several managers, and he's just kind of he's just kind of hovering around at the minute. And he uh, he, he should have went on out on loan. He got offered loads on uh, deadline day for championship yeah. clubs to go and prove his worth, and he wanted to stay and fight for his place. But I think that was a mistake on his part because he could have went down to the championship and built a little bit of stock for himself for next season. Yeah, totally agree on that. Say, say that, Johnny. Say, uh, Atsu's got no future, but Kyle would rather keep Aaron. Say, Johnny, you see? My connection's um, going. <laughs> speaking of that, uh, Johnny, I'll come to you. Hi, lads. <laughs> um, hope you're all right. Who, which signings would you like to basically see if the takeover happens and strike? I'd look at Mitrovic or even Rondon back. I think most of us would agree with Rondon. Or oh, Osherman from Lille. That's from Jake. Any particular names that you'd like to say, Johnny? Um, off the top of my head, I, I, I would probably go more make players that are potentially more Premier League proven. Um, make a statement, go and get a Coutinho if you want. Get him on loan or pay pay ridiculous wages and make a, make a point that's saying that we're not here to potentially you know, make up the rest of the Premier League. I'm actually here to do something. Um, I've always been a fan of Zaha from Crystal Palace. He wants to leave Palace. I don't think he wants to come from Palace to Newcastle. But again, if you offer him a lot of money, he's better than what we've got, in my opinion. So he's another player. But a striker is the top of my priority. Again, Rondon would be somewhere I would go for for short term, long term. I'd Absolutely, have I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to think about it. Ryan Tree is on a free because we need a winger. 
Yeah, so I forgot about that. As well, yeah. yeah. Uh, great show, guys. Quick question, if you can answer. Does Bruce's contract expire at the end of the season? If so, with no takeover at the moment, will he automatically get an extra year? He's got more than a one-year contract. We'll answer that there quickly. I think he's got another two-year, I believe, after this. Yeah, uh, he got a three-year contract. Yeah. And uh, Kyle, since you've just mentioned it, are you confident on the takeover? And that's from James Griffiths. Um, I'm still very much down the middle with it, to be honest. I just, I, it, it's so up in the air. It's been going on for so long, and I'm, I'm, ho- I'm, I'm going along the the kind of same thought as what Johnny has. There's no one, re- there's no major gen that said anything bad about it, and it's just a case of a waiting game. Fingers crossed, it does go through this time, and we're not sitting in limbo under Mike Ashley for much longer. But um, I would I would say I'm confident, but I'm also not confident, so I don't answer your question at all. But um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, get your WhatsApp coming in because we're going to have a little break Yeah, uh, We're going to have a little advert, then Johnny's going to take over, and we're going to talk all about Brighton, so please keep your WhatsApp coming in for us to answer uh, later in the show. And this one's all about Amazon. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. The Black and White Show will be with you after this short break. See you in a few minutes. Today, we're going to talk about Amazon. We have our very own Amazon store in which you can find pretty much anything to do with Newcastle United, from shirts to pencil cases to anything you want. Lee, what have you bought from our Amazon store? Oh, I love a good pencil case and duvet, don't I? As that's been around the internet before. No, I've I've got a lot of stuff, uh, not just Newcastle stuff. I've also got a lot of tech stuff that we use, like cameras and mics from Amazon. So they do a lot of stuff on our Amazon store. But I probably say that my favourite favourite is the shirt because we do a lot more range. But you can get anything. You can get literally anything from a pen to a bottle of vodka to bed sheets you name it amazon has it all yeah amazon is great for its range of products and the best part is is that we aren't giving anything to mike ashley and sports direct nothing sports direct related related on that store sam how brilliant is that purchasing newcastle memorabilia 100 percent guilt free Mm -hmm. that man is not receiving any of your money for your purchases on our amazon store i myself Love the memorabilia section. I don't know about you boys, but classic shirts uh, from years gone by. Signed, signed, signed photos of Newcastle legends. Alan Shearer, Shea Given, Les Ferdinand. They're all on here, all on our Amazon store. It's a cracking, cracking, cracking find. That's just reminded. That's just reminded me, Sam, because I actually like car accessories as well. So I've got a lot of fresheners in my car, which are Newcastle United. I literally, my car is kitted out. Don't tell me you can get a Newcastle United car air freshener from our Amazon store. Yeah, not oh, yes, you can. Several, Sam. There's loads there. So if you want your car looking nice, you're supporting Newcastle United. Just be careful where you park your car. But apart from that, it's fantastic. Get all them accessories. Yeah, so fantastic. If you want anything, pretty much anything Newcastle United related, check out our Amazon store. Link will be in the description below. Go have yourself a gander and you might find yourself a good bargain. Welcome back to the Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. How are Johnny? How are you? I was going to say, I was just going to sit and look at the camera. What's going on? (laughs) Can Johnny hear us? Oh, he's had one of his NE29 broadband connection problems, hasn't he? Mine's doing fine. Oh, here we go. Johnny, we can't hear you now. You can speak oh, all you want, but we can't hear you. He's just shaking his head. So this just, just back like, out and go back out. Do you want to come back out and come back in? Uh, Is he what, with us? I mean, yeah. I, there we go. I mean, the host of the preview has um, temporarily went away. But um, what's happening, everyone? We're back in the swing of things, but Johnny oh. will be back momentarily. He's he's coming back in now. I've seen, I've seen him at the bottom. And there I, he is. I've, I've, I've been stitched up here because it says my mic. It said my mic had been muted. No, it what? wasn't. No, on. no, it was on. Are we actually? I don't think we're live. You know, I don't know why I'm saying this. We are live. What's going we're on? Not, I know for <laughs> fact we're not. We're not live. Only 107 people watching, oh, man. How are we? Come on. Yeah, we are <laughs> we're not just sitting here, just making it up, you know. <laughs> All right, I'll start then. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> up. In fact, 
There you go. There's a live, there's a live comment right there, Johnny. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll, ex I'll explain before I start part two. I was literally, I, literally, this is the first time that I've seen this where I've literally been able to see Kyle and Lee, where because normally I can normally see what the viewers saying. So when I was just sitting down waiting, I, it just seemed my mic had been muted. So there you go. <laughs> Right, welcome back to part two of the Black White Show. <laughs> We're going to be previewing the Brighton game. Um, if you want to get your if you want to get your comments in, the only way you can do that is through our WhatsApp. We have got a quick question from Thomas. It says, "Hey lads, which membership type are you going to choose for Y Scout?" Ooh, I think that's yeah, a question for Mister Lawler. Yeah, that's something new that's coming to the channel. Be an update um, at the end of the season, just basically new technology that we're going to be using. So, if we're rumored to be with a player from the Belarusian Premier League division. We'll know instantly about that player, so we'll have a bit of a heads up. So it's something new, and we're going for the top one for the uh, answer there, Thomas. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Something exciting coming to the channel. Yeah, so if you want to be involved in the YouTube membership, there is bronze, silver, and gold. Gold will be the top one, of course, where you'll get literally more or less unlimited content from Newcastle fans TV. And why would you not want that, of course? Uh, I also mentioned a big thanks to all our sponsors, so Free Retro, Amazon, and of course, Beer 52. We've all got Beer 52 uh, beers. I've got mine in the fridge. Kyle must have alcohol free ones and Leo. Oh, I've got them. I've got them. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Amazon as well. They've still got one live Premier League game, which is midweek Sheffield United versus Everton. And if you want one of Kyle's fantastic Newcastle tops, the best place to get them is from Free Retro. So, yeah, Kyle wins that one today because Sam normally tries a bit, game a bit of competition. But uh, yeah, Kyle deserves, well, Kyle deserves that win, one. But we'll move on. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get your WhatsApp uh, WhatsApp, I should say, in it's 07476 497 166. We guarantee we'll read out all your WhatsApp comments in the next maybe half an hour or so. So it's Brighton on Monday night. Uh Christian Atto actually got an assist one time we played Brighton in the championship for IOC Perez. So he isn't he's not too bad in the championship. Um, oh, gee, oh, gee, got a wonder goal that night. He, he did, he did. It was a fantastic night. Um, but see, Bruce has confirmed Kyle injury problems galore. Eight players potentially out of this game. Kieran Clark, we knew about Jamal Lascelles, we knew about he got injured against uh, Watford. Florian Lejeune, we knew about uh, ASM, a major doubt, but you would have to su suspect that he's out. Uh, Sean Longstaff, Fabian Sher, and Paul Dummett. I don't know why he mentioned Dummett because he's not involved in the Premier League anyway. So, but yeah, he was he was one of the names on that eight man list. Um, Centre halves were struggling big time, Kyle. And Kel Water, you mentioned in part one, looks like he's going to get given his chance as Premier League debut alongside Federico Fernandez. You know, Newcastle, Newcastle fans will probably say it's a nothing game, but it's great that youngsters are going to get a chance in these nothing games potentially. Yeah, well, I say, I say the last time I was on, mate, that they need, it, when are you going to get a better time to, to test these youngsters out? I mean, there's no atmosphere. They're playing in the Premier League. Um, we're, we're already safe. There's perfect chance to see what they can do, and if and then at least you'll know where you stand, whether they're good enough or they need another loan, or you just sell them uh, onto the next club or release them or whatever you want to do. But at least you know where you stand. It's a perfect time to play these lads, especially when injuries are going up and up and up. The likes of the likes of Callum Watts deserves an opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Now, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play on Monday. I mean, he's going to have his hands full with Glenn Murray, an experienced centre forward, but. Um, I'm really confident in the lad, and I really hope he can um, can give a good performance worthy of his debut. Like, do you think it's a risk, or do you think it's just something that we have to do, Lee? Because uh, are they free messages? Yes, they are, Jake, for the WhatsApp. If you want to, uh, to get your uh, messages in, yeah, it's free. WhatsApp's always been free from as far as I've been concerned. Yeah, anyway. it's free, Jake. So just fire on WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah, so like Kel Watts, it's not a gamble, is it really? Because we've got nobody else. You like, you could throw, a, you could potentially. I'm, I'm saying this, you could throw Bentel in there potentially, but that's Jesus a massive Christ, risk. Johnny, I, 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 Johnny, I, I, Johnny, well, Johnny, you can't be else? saying things like that. No, I'd rather who play else? Joel who than centre back, man. Was like, that was the no only way. person that I was. I was looking through the players that we actually had available. And I was thinking, apart from like, this is apart from any youngsters. I was thinking, could you really throw Bentel in there as a like a last, last, last resort, possibly? No but it's not a gamble, is it, Lee? I think I would like to say, I said it in the time we are clip, I would love to see a couple of lads, not just off the bench for five minutes, start them. If they didn't play well, you can toy them off after an hour. What are you going to learn about these kids? Because they're just going to have another season, have another pre-season with the under-23s, and then half of them will be loaned out to a lower league side. We're not learning nothing. Uh, I'd like to say Tom Allen giving a start, not on the right wing, get him up top. Why not? Why not? Why not? Would you drop Gale for him? 
I wouldn't, but I would like to see it, if that makes sense. I wouldn't I wouldn't be against it. Dan Bar lays off his fit. I don't think he'll make it though, unfortunately. I'd just like to see a couple of them start, even Jack Young, if so be it. Let's or not even start, even if you give him half an hour at the very worst. Get him on after after the hour. Because we're not we're only playing for 13 or 14th position. That's it. We're not really going to get any higher or any lower. Brighton aren't going to catch her. They've got to win two out of two, and we're going to lose the two out of two. That's not going to happen. So I would like to see a couple of lads start. Yeah, I would love to. And it's always about that DNA with the Geordies, isn't it? So I'd like to see more and more of the kids given a chance because what's the worst that's going to happen? You know, they're going to be moved on next season. So be it. Yeah. Kyle, is Steve Bruce in a difficult position? Because he say he plays all these local lads. Say he plays like Mike Longstaff, Kyle Watts, you know, Tom Allen, Jack Young, and Newcastle still get beat. People are going, well, why do you play all these youngsters? You need, to get them, you need, you need your best team. Newcastle need to be winning games. Is he in a, is he in a sticky position? Mate, he's been in a sticky position all season because with with new with Newcastle fans being so divided on him, he's always upset a crowd with whatever he's done in any way. So why not just take a risk and go for it with, with, with a couple of these youngins? As I said before, how are you going to know if they're going to be any good if you don't test them now? It's a Premier League game. They'll be up for it. You mean there was a lot of talk that there was a lot of players against Man City that just threw in the towel at half-time and we, we kind of got a leathered one. The, the the youngsters won't do that because they've got point they've got point to prove and they're hungry. What's the worst that can happen? Honestly, I know I know we could probably get beat, but it's uh, in the grand scheme of things, we're safe and we're we're going to be a Premier League team next season regardless. Do you know what I mean? Steve Bruce sent a half for one night only. He'd be more used than Bentaleb. He, he'd do a better job than flipping Bentaleb. That's for certain. The way people just coasted him past him the last couple of games, shite. But. Um, no, uh, uh, yeah, give these youngsters a chance, man. Uh, I think the, I think that they're hungry, they're ready. Give them a chance. They're not going to throw in the towel. At least they'll give the very best because they want to. They want to stake the claim for next season, pre-season, everything like that. Is Brighton the perfect opposition for these sort of players, Lee? Because Brighton have more or less say thirty-seven points. Um, Newcastle obviously forty-three. Potentially you could get forty-six. Brighton are safe. Uh, you can see the table on your screen that they're six points ahead of Bournemouth and Aston Villa. But the goal difference is where Brighton basically have that extra point, so they're not going to catch them unless it's something ridiculous like Newcastle win twelve nil, which could happen. Um, <laughs> so is it the, is it the perfect time to you know play them because Brighton it, it is Brighton are a good Brighton are a good test, I suppose, for these young young players. You look at the last two games that we've got. We've got Brighton Liverpool. Uh, probably you want to play them against Brighton because Brighton are on the similar kind of level. What the six points behind where they're safe, they're not going to go down. West Ham are done. They're safe. It's the relegation between Watford, Bournemouth and Villa. One out of those three goes down. So we've got now to lose. Because if we lose another game, it doesn't really affect. We're, we're literally just playing the 13th, 14th, us and Palace. So play a couple of lads. Get Matty to start. Get Tom Allen there. If you didn't, fine. At least give him half an hour for the last third section of the game. So we've got nothing to lose. And it, and it, it, it fills you with pride that us three are obviously all Geordies and we'll see one of our own come through and represent us. What more and more that happened because we used to complain for years that we didn't have anyone ball Paul Dummett, and all of a sudden we've got Gillespie, the two Langstaffs, Carol, Dummett himself, and we might have a couple more of these lads come through. So why Longstaffs. not? Yeah, I mentioned them, yeah. Yeah, so there is there is a lot of options. I have to I have to briefly touch about Matty Longstaff, Kyle, because I know we've mentioned him in part one about whether he's actually staying. But my question yeah. is, would you start him? I would start him, absolutely, but I don't think Steve Bruce will. Um, he, he can say all he wants about um, he's not playing Matty because of the contract situation. Total total bollocks, in my opinion. Like It's got everything to do with the contract situation because, for me, you can talk about physicality with Cher and that, but you don't play a centre-back in a centre-midfielder's centre midfielder's position when he's sitting on a bench. Um, I don't think Matty will start. I think he'll get the junk minutes again to try and prove a point with his contract situation. This is what you're going to have until the end of the season, unless you sign a contract. I think it's all just um, football politics, mate. And I think Matty's on one side and the uh, Steve Bruce and the club on, on another. And it's up to us to decide who we'll go with. But um, yeah, I don't think Matty will start. Yeah, but we'll, we'll go on more about this preview, but we have got a clip on Tyne and Weir TV, which we've got a fantastic relationship with. And Lee spoke to them going into this game. You're watching the Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. Newcastle United will be looking to bounce back from a run of three Premier League defeats in a row when they face Brighton at the Amex Stadium on Monday evening. The Magpies have confirmed their Premier League safety but have looked laboured in their past few games and will be looking to pick up three points. 
One particular worry at St James's Park is the future of Matty Longstaff, who remains in the shop window. So the last game of the weekend sees Newcastle travel all the way down to Brighton in effectively what is you would call a dead rubber. Brighton are practically safe, Newcastle are safe. Does Steve Bruce look at the options, maybe go to the youth? Blood them because let's face it, we're only really playing for 13 and 14 position. I would like to say a couple of the lads given the chance to try and impress. I'd like to say Valentino Lazaro start the last couple of games. And we need to get Matty Longstaff's contract sorted out because the lad is a talent. He's got loads of potential. His brother's here. It would make sense to try and get him tied down. I just hope Matty does stay because it is a bit of a concern. The end of the season is on the horizon with just two games remaining, but fans still expect a positive result. Newcastle could finish as high as 11th if results go their way and Steve Bruce looks set to push his side to the final day. With talks of a potential takeover still ongoing, it doesn't look like it will be a quiet summer at St James's Park, but fans will be hoping they can at least end their season positively. But going into um, Monday's game, like I say, it's a dead rubber. I hope Newcastle stop this because we've got three games now where we've lost. Stop this rut and come away from the Amex with a positive result. Because we've got Liverpool next after that. And you don't know what type of side that Jurgen Klopp's going to put out. Whether he plays the kids or he plays full strength knowing it'll be the last game of the season. But optimistic, I think Newcastle should come away. And fingers crossed, I think we'll bounce back and we'll win on Monday night. Want to get something off your chest? Interact with us in the live chat. And WhatsApp us your messages on... 0747 649 7166. This is the Black and White Show. I've never seen Lee so positive about Newcastle playing again. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. Um, Kyle, I'll touch about Brighton and then we'll try and agree on a predicted 11. Um, Steve Bruce has given Graham Potter a lot of credit. He basically says he's done a great job. So he says Christian's come in. Whatever that noise is, I can't hear. Where are we? Sounds like a plane's sounds like a plane's hovering over. It might be uh, Mike Ashley's plane. That's everyone gets mentioned, doesn't it? Um, we've touched about obviously Graham Potter. Um, Super State's done a fantastic job. It's a different approach, different style from when Chris Sutton was at Brighton. Um, he's even gone on to say, Steve, he's changed the whole philosophy of the club. Kyle, what do you think he means by that? The way they play, obviously, Hutton, as we know, as he used to manage Newcastle, he he played a certain way, and I think Potter has changed that. Uh, change that for the best at um at Brighton. They play more on the front foot. They've got some good, quick, energetic players coming through. The likes of uh, Neil Morpé, who who they signed last last season. And he, I think he scored what, 10, 12 goals now and for a team like Brighton. It's um it's a canny return that. So he's slowly changing it to his way and the the they look damn good for it. I know they're roughly in the same position. But if you rewind to last season and how bad Brighton were in the second half of last season, where they couldn't the, the, they couldn't pick up any points. I mean, I think they only won one in like 13 or 14. It's not a case of that this season actually look like the the progressing and getting better. So I think in the terms of that is how they've, they've changed it around. They're, they're like going for it a little bit more. They're not just going to be one of them teams that roll over and get hammered off teams every week because that's what Brighton were really. Yeah, I think Lee's just turned his sunbed on. I think that's why you can hear all that noise. In the back <laughs> it's not me though. Uh, I can imagine. Um, so Graham Potter, obviously, Thomas Johnny sources houses on. It's not me this time. It actually, isn't. It? <laughs> um, Just waiting for that sneeze. I don't know, but he's not here today. So that's not, he's, not, he's not here at the minute anyway. Um, he's not here. The ghost. The, the ghost. The, house. Yeah, the ghost. Exactly. Um, Lee Graham Potter's come in and obviously done a fantastic job. He's kept he's kept uh, brighten up. Do you think that he can just maybe do exactly the same thing as Steve Bruce? Maybe try a few different, maybe different formations, or do you think Brighton potentially could be on the beach as well? Like I know it's a game that's on Sky and whatever, but they're, they're safe as well. Do you think that maybe take the foot off the gas because Newcastle need a result just to kind of boost the morale of the of the city? Yeah, um, the play more attractive football. Uh, the start of the season off absolutely fantastic, didn't they? And then when the top five or six for a good few weeks, and then obviously they've dropped down. As Kyle's mentioned, Mopé has been their unsung hero, great buy. And I looked at it, oh, that's a bit pricey, mind, but it's got uh, double figures for a Premier League player. And they've got a lot of youngsters coming through. Uh, I quite like the young lad, uh, Lapti, at right, right wing back on him from Chelsea. Yeah. So they haven't been scared to uh, blow a couple of youngsters as well, playing the wing back system. 
Uh, they've got a, 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 a Toon fan, Dan Byrne, as well, the lanky lad. So he, um, he'll be one to try and do well against her. But um, in all honesty, though, <laughs> Brighton's a nightmare to get rid of. So I wouldn't um, nightmare to get it. So I wouldn't have mind getting rid of Brighton. But um, yeah, I think it's put it this way: it's on Monday night. It's, we're live at the same time as a couple of other games. I don't think there'll be many tuning in, neutrals tuning in at this one, mind. Because if you look at our results against Brighton, they've all been nil nils and one nils and one ones. There hasn't been many goals in it, so I could say that happening again. Yeah, for sure. I think it is going to be one where you're going to have to be a bit patient, <laughs> to say the least. You might look forward to the first drinks break, maybe. Um, Kyle, let's last question on Brighton. Who worries you? Because I think Aaron Moy's probably on his day a very, very good player. I actually wanted him at Newcastle, to be honest. I think if Shelby had gone, I'd like Moy uh, at Newcastle. But um, yeah, we talked about Neil Morpe. Obviously, Lee's talked about his goals. Um, you know, I, I wanted him at Newcastle as well. I think he was a good gamble. I think he did a good job at Brentford. Is there anybody else apart from more pay on Moy, or do you, do you agree with uh, with Lee on uh, certain other players as well? I think Dan Burns a problem as well, and and uh, the likes of Murray and whatnot. Because as Sam touched upon last week, we can't defend set pieces, and it wouldn't surprise me if Brighton took full advantage uh, of of the set pieces and and put one pass where at least um, on a free kick or something like that because of how poor we are in the air. And we're physical defenders aren't fit either, so that doesn't help. So I, I'm I'm wary of, of what they can bring from from set pieces, like so. Aaron yeah, it's going to be a hard game, bro. Especially with Aaron Moy on free kicks as well. He's 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 great at putting the ball where it needs to be. So yeah, I'm very very concerned going into Monday regarding that. But I'm hoping we can uh, get the youngsters have a couple of good performances. We can be proud of and we can get uh, we can get a win. Remember, if you want to get your apps, uh, WhatsApps, I keep on saying that wrong. So, when you get your WhatsApps in, in the next 10, 15 minutes, it's 07476 497166. Right, we're going to try and agree on a predicted 11 for this game. Um, the easy one is Martin Dubravka will start in goal. Um, back four. Are we agree with a, a four at the back? Is Mankio fit? You'll start right yeah. back, I think. I think Rose comes in at left back for me. I don't know if anybody disagrees. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. And then the, Two centre halves by look if the fact that they've tried to get uh, young uh, Kel Watts in. I think he started Fernandez, and I think it's probably the right call. What do, do, you think, Lee? Kraft, do you reckon Kraft will start there though? I hope not, because I but think I he's only. Not. I hope not I, as well, but I could see it. It wouldn't surprise us. I think. I think for me, Kyle, with uh, with Kraft, he's only he's, he hasn't played a lot of football, and he's played the last like three or four games in a row. He's played a lot of minutes in those three or four games that he's been involved yeah. in. Burnout for him, maybe. Do you think it might be too much on him? I know there's only two games left, but if they've, if they've been that desperate to get Watts involved, I think you, you potentially would want Mankiw on the right because he's had like a two game break. I don't think it's a case for Burnout, Johnny. I really don't because he hasn't played all season. I just think he's awful at, at centre back. Like, <laughs> he, he doesn't know how to track a run and he can't mark uh, correctly at centre back. So keep him as far away from there as possible. As I say is, um, on the last video, I was on keep keep him as far away from centre-back as humanly possible um, because he's, he's not good enough then. Teams look to exploit that and and Tottenham proved that with them being a fault for two of the goals defensively. So if Croft's playing, play him at right-back because he's fairly solid there. I wouldn't I wouldn't put him anywhere near centre-back again, no, no way. It could be a blessing in disguise that Fabian Che is not playing because his form's been really indifferent and so is Croft as well. So Could you sell one of them? I would know, yeah. Uh, you know, I loved uh, Fabian Shea last year. He said a few days ago on the video on NFTV Extra, he's got one year left on his deal. We've got too many centre backs, and he looks now the casualty. So I think I would sell him. I don't think he'll get much because he's in last year. He'd be good to get up to 10 million. But uh, I think Fabian Shea's time's now up in Newcastle. I don't. So I think if. Um... I think if a takeover happens and we we'll bring a new manager in, I think a new manager will get the best out of him. I mean, we're talking about the Fabian Share that was player of the year last season for Newcastle, and he was absolutely outstanding. I just think it doesn't work out with him and Bruce because Rafa used to play him in a back five or a back three or whatever it was, and he had so much freedom with the ball to, to just spray it around left, right, and centre. And he knew his job it, it, with Rafa being as disciplined as he was defensively. Share knew his job and it got the best out of him. I just think Bruce doesn't know how to get the best out of Shea and Shea's just, he looks disinterested at times under Bruce and it's a shame like because he's one hell of a player, brilliant footballer, but um, 
Yeah, I think I think it depends on if Bruce stays on. If a takeover happens and Bruce is still here, I think Cher will be shown the door. But um, I st- I'd still like to think there's a brilliant play in there. And um, if Bruce does take off, the next manager will get the best out of him. But when, I think we're, Lejeune, we're not going to I think Lejeune's time could be coming towards the end as well. If if, if, if it's him, and, I think him and Cher. If we don't have a takeover, those two could be the casualties. Yeah, potentially. Um, We'll, we'll stick with four two three one. That's how I've got it written down there. I've got John Joe Shelby and Matty Longstaff. Um, I think Bentleb, we've talked about how poor he is, uh, how poor he has been. I think of maybe only one half decent game that he's had for Newcastle, and that was in the Cup. He hasn't really, really shown much over the last few games. Like I think, I suppose he was all right against Bournemouth, but everyone had a good game against Bournemouth, I suppose. Um, does anybody disagree with Shelby and Matty Longstaff and, as the two just above the back four? I would like to say that, but I think Bruce will go Bentleb, unfortunately. And um, right. I kind of say I kind of say Matty Starton. Kyle, I'll go with Lee. Why did you have to do that? Because it's because it's going to happen. <laughs> you know that. I know. Oh, I know that. I, know. I would like to see Matty. Hang on, it. but he's going to go. I, I saw that, but he will. He'll go bent left to what is that? It's Johnny's it's daughter. It's my daughter. The horse house returns, <laughs> but. Um, no, he'll go. He'll go with Bentaleb. He, he's got this. He's. He, it's almost a fetish for Bentaleb. He just likes shit midfielders, but he's. He's going to stick with him. Um, I feel so sorry for Matty because he deserves a chance, but it, it's going to be Bentaleb, unfortunately. Will Bentaleb get better, Lee? <laughs> That's what I said at Oxford. Bentaleb can yes. get uh, everywhere. Every time he plays, it has not been that way whatsoever. He's been absolutely awful. He's like I said this before. He's just another Jack Colback. He passes sideways and gets put out of position. He puts his foot in where it hurts. But apart from that, not not for me. The three going forward um, with obviously the striker. We'll mention the striker in a second. I've gone Richie, Miggy, and Lazaro as the three going forward behind the striker. Um, surely Bruce has got to start with Lazaro, Kyle. I said this before, mate. I'd be very, very surprised if uh, Lazaro starts judging on the conspiracy theory as I'm putting the chat that I've got. But um, I would like to see Lazaro start. Don't get us wrong, but I don't think he will. I think he'll uh, persist with someone else. I, 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 much to the uh, disbelief of what, even though what I said before, I, I think Atta will start. <laughs> as 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 um, bad as, or he might play Yedlin further up the field like he did the other Better week. not. I mean. It's things. It's these type of things that he's going with, but I, I don't say there's oral starting. I really don't. Um, I believe in what I think regarding that one, mind. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen a comment for for Jack Young to play. I would like the same play, but I, he will persist with his um, his favourites. He's got Bruce has favourites, and he keeps going with them, much to the frustration of a lot. We even play some out of position to play them. Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, you could so, even play Joe Litton out wide. No. No, you might not. Oh, no, you might. Oh, yeah, but of... it's Bruce we're talking about. It's not our. It's not our eleven. It's what we're thinking. What he's thinking. Yeah. Do you think Jolinton will get the nod over Richie or Miggy? Possibility. I kind of see Lazaro starting. So you think it'll be Richie, Miggy, and Jolinton? Possibly, and Gale up top. Is that what you think, Kyle? Yeah. Uh, um. Uh, to to a T, actually. I, I mean, I don't rate Jolinton as a as a winger, but. I think that's why he's going to persist with, because as the stats says earlier on, Jordan's played a part in every single game. Uh, he hasn't started many of them. I think that's down to, to fitness and fitness alone. Otherwise, he would be starting. But um, yeah, that's. I think that's what 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 he's going to go with. Like, I would go with different, but we know what Steve Bruce is like. He's got a thing for for, for these weird lineups. Yeah, yeah. So I predicted eleven because I agree with Gail as well. There's De Brafka and goals is what we think Steve Bruce will go with. Mankira at right back, Fernandez and Watts at centre half, and Danny Rose at left back. Shelby and Bentaleb as the two, and then as the three we've got Richie, Miggy, and Joe Linton. Lazaro continuing his uh, well his return pat on the bench, and then we've got Dwight Gale, the goal scorer up front. Um, Lee Steve Bruce doesn't like talking about it, but 46 points will beat Rafa. From last year, will Newcastle get to forty six points with the nah, win on Monday night? I think we'll win. I actually think um, we'll win. You'll probably want to score prediction later, but I've already said oh, that right now. Actually, I think we'll win. I think we'll. I don't think there'll be many goals, and I think we'll scrape at one nil. I think we'll get beat off Liverpool, even if Liverpool play the kids. 
But looking at that graphic, our form is horrendous. Look how many goals we've conceded, Johnny. Yeah, but you've got, I, th- I, I know we've so got the big boys, Man City. I know, but that's 15. And uh, where defence is ripped apart in the minute. And I think you kind of play players out of position because it's it's affecting them defensively. Look at Kraft for, for Kane's goal. Yes, Sam give the ball away for the third goal and Kraft is just... A Lamel- I mean, Lamella's not a great player. He's a good player, but he's not like elite. And he turns Kraft twice and play play players in the correct positions and they'll, they'll see they'll perform better. But you look at the th- you look at the four that we, we're predicting with on Monday night, uh, Lee. Apart from Watts, that's three of probably the four that we would normally go with. It's only Jamal Lascelles that we'll probably would get in instead of Watts, obviously. So you'd like to think with that consistency with Debrafka and Netley, Newcastle should be at worst because even just one goal, maybe. Brighton don't score many. But we concede a lot recently. Both teams are out of form, but I think it'll be Kraft, unfortunately. I'd like to say Kel Watts up. I think I think he'll go with Kraft at right centre back, and I think he'll choose experience over players who should be playing there. Where's yeah. Kraft's experience? So he's played what five, six Premier League games, and he's looked bang average. In fact, he's I looked shit in four of them. I think it's just because the fact Bruce will go with him because he's Sweden international, played in the Euros, played in three different leagues across Europe. For me, I would have watched every any day of the week just the same. But if that's not going No, I, I I agree with what you both say about Kraft. I, I don't think he's good enough. I'd be I would, I would sell him. I know we're going to do a video on this where obviously we'll do keeps uh, sell and loan for next season. I think that'll come maybe a week after the season finishes, but. Yeah, that, that'll be an interesting video. It'll be an interesting debate. I think there'll be a few of us on the channel that will want to get involved in that one. Um, you've, have you, what do you say? 2-1, Newcastle, Lee? No, I'm going 1-0 win. 1-0. Kyle, where you, which fence are you sitting on for this one? Um, I mean, I'm, comp- I, 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 I'm not... As, as, as you know, I'm not one for predictions, but um, I, 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 I don't swing either way regarding this result, to be fair. I just play it safe and go down the middle of the draw. <laughs> I mean, Johnny just looks at each other. Like, oh, all right. No, you looked at one one section of the screen. <laughs> Maintain eye contact at all times, lads. But um, no, nah, I think it'll be a draw. Um, you'll we'll see good performances from the the kids that do get to play. But that, well, if they get to play, we'll see a massive mistake from someone that we don't like. Uh, we'll lay into them on scoring the players, and then uh, we'll look forward to what will be. The biggest cricket score in football in history is we take on Liverpool the weekend. But um, well, host has gone for a second time. The ghost of um, any 29 is raving back and taking his internet away. It's the ghost, not the host. He has the ghost. ghost. I'm, I'm, I'm going to blame this lad. It's called Dan Snell. He's just rang me. So I don't think he knows I'm on a stream. I think he, I don't know what he wants, but I'll ring him after the stream anyway. Um, nothing to do with the Wi-Fi because I'm only 4G. There you go. Um, we'll quickly wrap this up then. <laughs> what did you put? Did you say a prediction, Kyle? I got disturbed there. No? I, I said a draw, mate. I said a draw. So we nearly got a prediction out of him, Lee. Nearly. Nearly. I didn't um, think it was a draw. Is it yeah, a score not, draw? Is it a score draw? There'll be goals. I'm not. I'm not going to give an exact figure, but it'll. I think it'll be a draw. So Desmond, two? Desmond. <laughs> we'll just we'll keep it a draw, it. Johnny. We'll go. I, 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 I'm actually going to join you on that fence in any 29 as well. Oh. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. One more. brethren. Yes, exactly. Uh, Liam, if you can get the WhatsApps ready, that'd be absolutely mint. Yeah, uh, let's get them up. Let's get them up. Um, let's brighten up. Hopefully, we'll brighten up on Monday night with a win. Remember, you can get all the reaction from us on Monday night straight after the game. We'll have the live family action show. We'll have scoring the players. Um, I don't know if you've, we've got uh, a Brighton fan yet. We might do, we might not do. We'll let you know. I'll, I'll try and have a look over the weekend for that Brighton fan. Yeah, there is a few of them, apparently. Um, and then we'll obviously have the, the last word with Lee on late Monday evening. It's six o'clock kickoff, isn't it? So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, shocking. I don't know what it's shocking about. It's unknown. Uh, for the Brighton game, I'm not confident at all. Uh, not confident at all, if I can say any words. More pay will probably... Get on the score sheet and Fernandez will probably play. And he's knackered and we're low on players, so this will be a boring game. Um, instead of playing Bentleb, he doesn't want to play Matty. Uh, should give likes of Jack Young and Tom Allen and Keenan Watts. Obviously, we've talked all about that, but we agree with you on that one. Um, you know, we want those sort of players to be, at least be given time on the pitch on Monday night. Uh, the next question, I might not be able to do the family action at a cricket game. How's that? Uh, we'll continue. Yeah. <laughs> So he'll be uh, out for that one. Uh, hi, lads. Never mind the takeover. Where has Alicia gone? Or as I'm, as I'm guessing, is it Isha, maybe? 
I think I think he means Isha. Well, all shall be res- res- resolved when we do a channel update towards the end of the season. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the to- next, she, yeah, she's not gone. She's not gone. <laughs> but we are doing a channel update where you'll, everything will be explained in the future. Uh, next one, it says the key players should be given the rest of the season off to recuperate and prepare mentally for next season. It's going to be a long one, followed by the Euros. I don't think Kyle. I don't think Steve Bruce will do that because. We haven't got many fit players as it is. Like Steve Bruce is down, more or less ever down with the bare bones. And then you look at the bench, you know who's coming on. It's going to be the likes of Lazaro coming on, Atsu coming and playing 15, 20 minutes. Steve Bruce can't really afford to do that at the minute. No, uh, you'll stick with the players that we've got. I don't think anybody will be going on any early holidays, even though there's performances that have indicated otherwise. But you'll stick with what he's got until the end of the season. And then hopefully we can get this takeover in place and try and get a squad ready for the next season. But, um, yeah, I don't see much changing in that regard, mate. Yeah. Uh, the next one says, Atsu and Bentaleb are shocking. Start Dan Barley's with John Joe Shelby. Start Carl Watts, but do not start Bentaleb or Atsu. Start Muto. Muto is a person I've really talked about, Lee. Does, does yeah. he deserve more minutes at all? <sighs> Again, you could play him in the 10 or out wide, possibly. I know he's not... What is his best position, though? Because we don't really know. Is it the 10? I would, I would say probably on the right-hand side of the three. So, or you finish a forward? Yeah, there's not there's a few options there. You could play Mutu, so you'd be desperate to play. So there's another one that you might throw your hat into the ring, but I can't say it. I think his future's out the door when the season's out the way because Bruce just not fancy one bit. Kyle, we've got a lot of dead wood at this football club, haven't we? That's an understatement, mate. But when you keep the mo- the majority of squad that came up with it from the championship, you're going to have that eventually. So yeah, it, it, it again, mate. It, it all depends on this takeover. We're gonna if it doesn't happen, then we're going to be stuck with a lot of this team. But if it does go through, then there's going to be a, a big job on whoever's hands it's going to be on to get the get the players that need to go out. Because you you could you could say around ten or twelve could could be out the door. It's yeah. it's it's quite it's quite a big job on uh, to get people out, but um, I uh, it's a lot of dead wood in the squad, mate. I totally agree. Yeah, hundred percent. Mug says I'm going two one for for the lads on Monday, and hope. Uh, what do you think of the takeover? I think all three of us are cautiously optimistic. Is probably the phrase I would use uh, for the next few well, I say days, but probably months. <laughs> We're never going to find out. It'll probably be Christmas before we find out. We might be back in the stadium That's in going October. That's fully grey by the time you get an answer. Exactly. <laughs> I, might, I, might grow, I might grow my hair back. Who, who knows? That might happen. <laughs> uh, but well, yeah, that is... The... You'll have a mullet by then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, this is the end of the Black and White Show. A big thanks to everybody that got involved on WhatsApp and your comments underneath. Again, as I've mentioned, we'll be back on Monday night where we'll have family action, scoring the players, uh, possibly get a Brighton fan and we'll have the last word ahead of Brighton versus Newcastle. Hopefully, we can try and end the season with a bit of a high. Hopefully, everything will go well and Kel uh, Watts will get his chance to shine on the south coast and hopefully Newcastle can come away with something this uh, well on Monday night as well. Uh, thanks very much, Lee. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks, thanks very much, Kyle. Cheers, mate. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Yeah, again, and we're back next week with the Black and White Show as we look forward to the Liverpool game next Sunday. Can't wait for the champions to come to St James's Park. And on that note, we'll see you all very, very soon. You're watching the Black and White Show with Newcastle Fans TV. I'm here, joined by Lee and Owen, and we're going to discuss our new sponsor for Newcastle Fans TV, Beer 52. What have you got there, Owen? It is a box full of beer from our sponsors, Beer 52. Amazing amazing quality stuff and um, how did you go about getting such marvelous well, beer i just visited the link that we have in our description it's called uh beer52.com forward slash nftv just sign up five pound 95 for a box full of beer what more could you want great for cans now it's the largest uh beer tasting club if you like lee what uh what are you drinking there so I've had just the one so far, but my box arrived yesterday. Um, the first thing I noticed about it was all the colourful cans. I was like, ooh. I was uh, opening all these up. And I've got one called Puffin Tears. And it uh, comes from Cornwall IPA. 5%, which is a nice rounded figure for a nice beer. White and green is that one. So I've tasted that one. I can't wait to tuck into the others. But I do need to keep some, Sam, for takeover. I'm, tr- I'm trying to hold on. I am really, really, really am. 
what better way to get ready for hashtag cans than visiting beer52.com forward slash NFTV. Although I don't think it'll hurt to crack one open now. I've gone for the Tiny Rebel Lazy Boy Lager 4.3. So it's a session, session lager. Let's give it a go. Owen, what else have you got there in your inside your uh, Beer 52 package? Well, I've got a magazine called Ferment. Did you get the pun? Um, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant little magazine. Read through. You can find out all sorts in here. Um, like beer creation. Fantastic. Also, just before I whip out one of my cans, it's got the Two Tribes Electric Circus American Pale Ale. Only 4.7%. So, obviously, if you don't want to get too drunk, just have one of those. Chill out. Relax in the sun and enjoy hashtag cans. Absolutely. Lee, what better way to get yourself ready for cans than have beer arriving on your door every month? Especially with the pubs on, uh, open at the moment. So you can have beer delivered to your front door, which is mint. You can also use your cans whenever you want. You can use it if you're going to watch Newcastle because you can't attend the games. You can watch them behind closed doors. And the great thing about it, what I like about it, it's not a contract. You can cancel your subscription whenever you like. You certainly can. Join the nation's biggest beer tasting club at beer52.com forward slash NFTV. Broadcasting live across YouTube and across Newcastle Fans TV's social media, this is The Black and White Show.